Hello everyone! Today's video is a knitting tutorial. Last time I tried crocheting a top-down regular sweater, so I thought this time I should try it in knitting. And this is actually my first properly knitted sweater. But as you guys can see, it is quite successful and it just reminds me how cool a skill knitting is so i'll try my best to explain to you guys how to make this sweater and also this is a beginner level tutorial so no skills required before we get started all you need is your materials i'm gonna be using this lion brand homespun new look this is a category 5 bulky yarn 98% acrylic and 2% other fiber. It calls for a 6mm needles. I'm actually going to go up half a size for no other reasons. So I'm going to be using 6.5mm needles. But if you want to use whatever your yarn calls for, you can use that too. We're going to begin from the neckline. I'm going to leave a really long tail. We're going to use the long tail cast on. So I left four times my arm length and then I'm going to make a slip knot and I'm going to insert my hook in the slip knot with the tail end closer to us like this and then we're going to cast on. I'm going to put my thumb and my pointer between the yarns and then hold the yarns down at the bottom like this and use my first two fingers to push them open flip my hand now we've got two loops loop one and loop two i'm going to go through loop one upward like that and then loop two downward downward like that and then go through loop one again downward hold down let's do that again hold yarn down push open flip them two loops loop one up loop two down and loop one down one up two down one down one up two down one down up down down up down, down. Up, down, down. Okay, so that is one stitch two three four five six seven eight nine so i'm going to continue doing this and your goal is to get a stitch number that is a multiple of six plus eight and because we're going to knit in the round apart from the stitch number requirement i also have to make sure i have enough stitches to go around the needles so I did 56 stitches, now it can go around my needles, so I can knit like this. It can be a little tight at the beginning, but that is okay because we're going to increase from the next round. This is basically how big my neckline is going to be, but I do want to remind you this has to be big enough to go over your head, so it's not always bad if it's a little bigger. So my stitch number is 56 stitches. At the neckline like this but we're going to look at it as a rectangle 
So my stitch number is a multiple of 6 plus 8. 6 times 8 and plus 8. 56 stitches. So this number, it is the stitches on the short side. And the long edge is going to be double that, which is 16 stitches. Then we're going to have two stitches at each corner. This is our increase spot. So if you add that all together, 8, 8, 16, 16, 16, 16 times 3, 6, uh, 48, and then plus that 8 stitches. It is going to be 56 stitches, which is my stitch number. So if you look at this loop, that is the beginning of a round, which is going to be the back, the center back of the sweater. So that is the front. That's the back. Now I have eight stitches here and eight stitches here. What we're going to do is put a stitch marker right before the two corner stitches. So I'm going to put stitch markers before the four increase spots here, 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 and here. For the four spots, I'm going to use my rings as the stitch marker, but I'm going to use a different stitch marker to mark the beginning of the round. So I'm going to put the stitch marker on my right needle. I'm going to knit the next eight stitches and then put a stitch marker here. When you join in the round, make sure these bumps are facing inward. So you're just making sure the stitches are not twisted. As you can see, my stitches are not all the way to the tip. So what I can do is just pull the cable like that. And now I can reach the stitches. So for this sweater, we're just going to use the knit stitch. To knit a stitch, insert your right needle in the stitch upward with your right needle at the back and then grab your working yarn it is the yarn that's coming from the ball not this one the other yarn and then wrap it around needle two from back left front and then pull this loop through like this with the right needle now at the front. Then take the stitch off needle one. So we just did a knit stitch. I'm going to pull this yarn tighter because that's the joining point. And then let's knit the next stitch. Insert your right needle upward. Bring working yarn back, left, front. Pull the loop through with the right needle at the front and then take the stitch off. Insert, wrap yarn around, pull it through and then take off. Insert, wrap around through take off at the beginning you're gonna have to move your stitches around a lot because the stitches are tight so I just did my first eight stitches so I'm going to place my put my ring here and then the next two stitches are the corner stitches I'm going to knit these two stitches This round, we're not going to do any increase, so I'm just going to 
continue knitting. I'm going to knit eight more stitches because after those two corner stitches, we have eight stitches on the side. And then after eight stitches, I'm going to place a stitch marker again. So after those two corner stitches, I did eight more stitches. I'm going to place a second stitch marker. And then the next two stitches are the next corner stitch, which is these two. So I'm going to knit the next two stitches. And after two stitches, we are here right now. We need to knit the next 16 stitches and then place a stitch marker here. So I'm going to knit the next 16 stitches. So after 16 stitches, I'm going to place a third stitch marker and then knit the next two corner stitches. So now we are here. Then we're going to knit the next eight stitches, place a stitch marker, then knit the next two corner stitches, and then we have eight stitches left for this side. Eight. Place a stitch marker. Then I should have 10 stitches left. Okay, so I do have 10 stitches left. I'm going to knit every single one of them and reach the beginning of the round. Finish the last stitch of this round. And whenever I get to this special marker, I'm just going to transfer it to the other needle. Now we just finished the first preparation round. From the next round is going to be a two round repeat pattern. The first round is going to be an increase round. The second round is a plain round with no increase. So we're going to begin the first round. The increase only happens at the stitch marker. So I'm going to knit all the way to the first stitch marker. I'm just going to knit every stitch all the way to the stitch marker. Okay, so that is the last stitch before the stitch marker. I'm going to knit that stitch as well. So when you're working an increase round, whenever you see stitch markers like this, this means we're going to increase here, 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 and here. Ignore this one because that's just the beginning of the round. We don't have to increase there. So this is how you increase. You're going to knit into the last stitch before the stitch marker. And then the first thing you do is yarn over like that. That's an increase. Then you're going to slip the stitch marker to the other needle, knit the next two corner stitches. Knit two stitches and then yarn over again and then continue knitting. Knit every single stitch here. So the two yarn over we just did increased two stitches here. I'm going to knit to the next stitch marker and show you again. Knit to the last stitch before the stitch marker, yarn over, slip marker, Knit two stitches. Yarn over again. And that is it. Okay, so continue working your stitches. Knit into every single one of them. And then add this stitch marker and this one. You're going to do the same thing we did here and here. I'll see you at the end of this round. Last stitch, 
and then slip the stitch marker. The next round is the second repeat round. For this round, we're just going to knit every stitch. And whenever you see a stitch marker, you're just going to slip it to the other needle. So let me show you. I'm going to continue knitting. The stitch right before the stitch marker is going to be a little different because that is the yarn over we did. There's a big hole here, you can see. But you're just going to treat it as a stitch and then just knit it like that. Slip your stitch marker, continue knitting. This is another yarn over, just treat it as a stitch and knit it. At this point, I have just enough stitches to go around the needle, so I put my cable back in place. Knit the stitch, slip marker, and continue knitting. Go ahead and finish this round. I've finished round three, and from here, we're just going to repeat the last two rounds. The first round is the increase round, the second round is the plain round. So the next round, we're going to increase again, slip the stitch marker, knit my stitches all the way to the first increase spot, which is this stitch marker. It is the exact same increase pattern. So I'm going to knit into the last stitch before the stitch marker, yarn over, slip the marker, and then knit two stitches, always two stitches. Yarn over again, and then continue knitting. Sometimes you just forget which round you're at. Um, this is the best way I can think of that requires my least attention. So when I finish one increased round, I just take it and finish the second one, take this one, and keep doing that. You might have other ways to help you keep track, but whatever way you're using, as long as it works, you can use that. When you're working your second repeat round, sometimes the stitch marker can get moved around because in the first round we did a yarn over, so the stitch marker could move like that. Normally it should be like this, yarn over and then the stitch marker. But sometimes when it gets moved around, it appears before the yarn over. Okay, so it's just something that I want you to know might happen. And when it happens, we have to correct it. Otherwise, we're going to mess up the increase here. So when it happens, you can simply take the stitch marker off, knit this yarn over, and then place your stitch marker. Because this stitch marker is always right before these two corner stitches. So I've worked about 7 inches and I think my work could be long enough that when I pinch these two stitch markers together, this could reach my armpit and my arm can fit through here. So now I'm going to try it on to see if it's long enough. Um, but before I do that, I need to transfer the stitches onto a scrap yarn um, because this would not fit me. And before you transfer the stitches, make sure you're ending on the second repeat round. Because again, if you do it on the first repeat round, the stitch markers might get moved around. So I left one stitch here so I don't lose the stitch marker. I'm just going to use my needle, go through the stitches. You can take them off once they're on the needle. Um, I know this would take some time, but it should be an easy task. Just make sure you don't lose any stitches. 
and I might end up doing this a few times because if I try it on, it doesn't fit me. I would have to put the stitches back on the needles, continue knitting, and then again when I feel it's long enough, I'd have to transfer the stitches and try it on again. And then I'm tying the ends together so the yarn doesn't come off. And that's what the sweater looks like at the moment. And like I said, I need to pinch these two corners together on each side and make sure my body fit through here and my arms here. So I put it on, but it was a little tight under the arm. So I put the stitches back on the needle and then continued increasing until from here to here, is about 8 inches and now if I pinch my underarm together I have extra space here and not to mention later when we join the front panel and the back panel together we are going to add a little more stitches here so the body and the arm is going to be slightly bigger than what we have here but anyway if you want your sweater to be fitted you can just stop here but if you're going for a oversized type of style, you can continue increasing. It really is up to you. So next what we're going to do is transfer all the stitches of the front panel and the stitches of the back panel onto one needle, which is my working needle, 6.5 millimeter working needle. For the sleeve, you just transfer all these stitches on a piece of scrap yarn. And this is where we separate the body stitches and the sleeve stitches. So you can see we have two center stitches here, very obvious. This one belongs to this side and the other one belongs to the other side. So that's body stitch, that's sleeve stitch. And then I'm going to transfer all these stitches onto my scrap yarn. And same thing again, take off stitch marker, two center stitches here, that one is going to belong to this side. And then I'll just tie these two ends together. I just did two sleeves. And now I'm going to transfer all the stitches that's left onto my working needle. I've got my two sleeves here, back panel stitches, and then front panel stitches onto my needle. This is where my working yarn is. I'm going to continue knitting, and I'll see you here. This is the last stitch on this side. Now we're going to cast on a few stitches here. These stitches will be added to the sleeve and also to the main body of the sweater. So to cast on a stitch, I'm going to grab the yarn and wrap it around my thumb like that, and then insert my needle through that loop. I'm going to cast on four stitches. That's one, two, three, and four. Keep the yarn at the back and then directly knit the next stitch on the other needle. I'm going to knit all these stitches and when you get to the other sleeve, do the same thing, cast on four stitches and then I'm going to continue working my stitches all the way back here and then I'll show you how to knit your cast on stitches. The cast on stitch is just like a normal stitch except that it's a little tighter. It might be easier if you bring it to the tip. Go ahead and knit that stitch and then from there you're just going to continue working your stitches in round and work the sweater body like that. For the main body of the sweater, you can really just make it as long as you want. This is the underarm. So from there, I did roughly 
8 inches. Then I'm going to make the ribbing. So I'm going to first knit to the beginning of the round. Slip the stitch marker. I'm going to do one by one ribbing. That means I'm going to knit one stitch, then purl one stitch. So go ahead and knit my first stitch. Then I'm going to purl the next stitch. To purl a stitch, we need the yarn. We need to bring the yarn to the front first and then insert my needle downward like that. Bring yarn around the working needle and then pull this yarn through the loop. Then I'm going to knit the next stitch. But to knit a stitch, we need to bring the yarn to the back. Knit the next stitch, then pull the next stitch, bring yarn to the front, insert my needle, purl wise, then bring yarn around the needle, pull it through the old loop. Bring yarn to the back, knit the next stitch. Yarn forward, purl the next stitch. So this is what we're going to do for the entire round. For this one by one ribbing, you would need an even number of stitches. So your last stitch should be a purl stitch. You should be purling that stitch and then slip the marker, knit the first stitch of the round and purl the next stitch again. And if any time you've lost track, you can look at the stitch here. The one that has a horizontal bar is a purl stitch. The one that doesn't have a bar is a knit stitch. So we knit the knit stitch and purl the purl. So that was seven or eight rounds that I did. But again, you can do as many rounds as you like. So I'm going to finish the last two stitches. And then we're going to use our yarn needle to bind off the stitches using a technique called tubular bind off. So first I'm going to take up the stitch marker and mark the first two stitches. Like that. And then I'm going to cut this yarn. Initially you want to leave four times as long as our work is wide but that's going to be super long. So when you are pulling your yarn through the stitches, it's a lot of work. So I'm just going to first leave about two meters. And then we're going to begin the tubular bind off. It's actually just two steps. So when the first stitch on the needle is a knit stitch, we're going to Go through the loop knitwise, drop the stitch off, and then skip one stitch, purl the third one. You pull the yarn through. When the first stitch is a purl stitch, we're going to purl this stitch, drop it off, then skip the next stitch, insert the needle between the second and the third stitch from the back, and then knit the third stitch. 
then you're gonna pull the yarn through and those are the only steps that we need to follow so let's do that again the first stitch is a knit stitch we knit this stitch drop it off skip one purl the third stitch so knit one off purl three Then step two, the first stitch is a purl stitch. Purl this stitch, drop it off. And come from behind, knit the third stitch. If you can do it all together, that's great. But I couldn't do it the first time I learned this method. Let's do it again. Knit one off purl three. Then purl one off coming from the back. knit three if you couldn't do it all together you can do it separately and then knit three knit one off purl three Purl one off. Knit three. So you're going to continue doing this when your yarn runs out. Just rejoin it and continue. Turned out I didn't need to rejoin the yarn, it was just about enough. So when you have two stitches left on the needle, you're going to pull the stitch marker up so we can find those two loops and then place those two loops back on the needle. I'm going to switch to a double pointed needle because it's easier, but you can just use the one you're using right now. The first stitch is a knit stitch so i know i'm going to go through the first stitch knit wise drop it off and purl the third stitch and purl the first stitch drop it off and then knit the third stitch And then you can take your needle off and then you just weave this end in to the wrong side and then the ribbing is finished i've already finished one sleeve here so you can see so for the sleeve we're going to work in rounds we're going to work five plain rounds followed by one round of decrease then five plain rounds again one decrease round five rounds one decrease round and then continue doing that so that's how the pattern is going to go but first we're going to transfer the stitches onto my circular needle so i'm going to begin from the first stitch this is the last stitch And then I can get rid of the scrap yarn.
Then I pulled my stitches onto the other needle so I can use my working needle to pick up stitches from the underarm. So I cast on four stitches here. That means I'm going to pick up four stitches. So get a new tail of yarn of the same color. I'm going to look for the center four columns. Let me mark them so you can see more clearly. So that's one, two, three, four. Four columns. I'm going to insert my needle in the top two loops of this column, the first one on the right. One, this one. And then place the new thread. on the needle like this so I can pick up a loop like that that's one and then in the next column top two loops insert my needle pick up one more loop Third one, and the fourth one. So now we have four loops here. I forgot to mention we need to put a stitch marker here to mark the center of the underarm. I'm going to carefully do that. So that's the first stitch of the round, even though the yarn starts from here. So to knit the sleeve, I'm going to use the magic loop method with my circular needle. I'm going to begin knitting from the next stitch. So with the magic loop method, you just knit to the last stitch on this needle. And then pull the other half of the stitches on the needle. And then this half, pull them onto the cable. Like that. Turn it work. And then begin knitting from the next stitch. And that's the last stitch of the round. Do the same thing again. So before I begin to knit the next stitch, I'm going to tie these two ends together. And then from here, I just continue knitting in rounds. When I get to the marker, transfer to the other stitch. Then I'm going to knit four more rounds just like this. Don't forget to mark the first round we picked up so it's easier for us to count the rows. Um, you might notice some holes around here, but that's okay. That's totally normal. We can fix that later. So this marked stitch, this row is the four stitches that we picked up. That is the first row, row one, row two, three, four, and five so that's five rounds not counting the first four stitches that were picked up so after five rows we're going to do a decrease row we're going to decrease before and after the stitch marker which marks the beginning of the round so you're going to knit to three stitches before the stitch marker and then in the next two stitches we're going to knit two together. So I'm going to treat these two loops as one. 
and then just knit the stitch. Knit the next stitch as normal. This is also the last stitch of the round. Transfer the stitch marker, knit one stitch, and then again, knit the next two stitches together. So we made a decrease here, knit two together, knit the next stitch, transfer marker, knit the next stitch, and then a knit two together, decrease again. And this is what we're going to do whenever we do a decrease row. And then I'm going to mark this knit two together. This is just to mark the decrease row. And then we're going to continue knitting, not counting this row. We're going to do five more rows and then follow that by a decrease row again. So just like this, Every marker you see mark a decrease round. So continue working your sleeves like that. I'm going to see you back here and show you how to do the cuff. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I forgot to mention because we need even number of stitches to make the cuff. Before this round, count your stitches, make sure you have an even number. If you have a knot number before the last decrease round, what you can do is at this round, you do that knit two together once, so you only decrease one stitch. So by the time you're here, you would have an even number. If you have an even number throughout the sleeve, then you don't have to make any adjustment. You can just decrease as normal. So this is number 11. That's a knit two together. So after that, I did five more rounds. One, two, three, four, and five. So this is round five. Next, I'm going to knit past these two stitches. By the way, I'm using a set of double pointed needles because the cable of my circle needles are too short for me to work comfortably. So you're going to knit all the way to the beginning of the next round. And then you're going to slip the stitch marker and then begin the ribbing. And just like before, we're going to do one knit stitch and one purl stitch. Then I'm going to mark that first knit stitch. So it's easy to count the rounds later. So starting from the first loop, you're going to keep working until you have 20 loops here. Then you're going to do that tubular cast off like we did for the main body of the sweater. And that is your cuff for the collar. The first thing we're going to do is pick up stitches around the neckline. We're going to do this from the center back of the sweater. So basically, we're going to pick up one stitch for every column. So I'm just going to find a stitch around the center and find a loop like that. Insert my needle in the center of the loop. And wrap my yarn around the needle just like we're knitting and pull it through. Then go into the next loop, insert needle, pull up one loop, continue doing this. That's the last column before the yarn over. So grab a loop from there. Then I'm going to insert my needle in the first yarn over. Pull up a loop. For these two stitches, I'm just going to pick up one loop from the center.
then insert needle in the next space pick up one more loop like that so this is what we do around the increase part now you're going to continue picking up stitches around the neckline i'll see you here that's the last column and pick up a loop then i'm going to tie the two ends together just gently not too tight then place a stitch marker at the end of the round so for the next round i'm going to knit into every stitch and then i'll show you how to decrease in the next round when you get to the beginning of the round slip a stitch marker and then knit to the yarn overs here because we're going to decrease here now i'm at the three loops that we picked up from the four columns then i'm going to do a knit two together um, because we have three loops i'm going to pick the two that is closer to the center of the sweater so the first two I'm just going to knit these two together. Then continue knitting. When I get to the three loops on the four columns, I'm going to knit the first one, then knit the next two together because these two are closer to the center of the sweater. So knit the first one, then knit the next two together. The next three loops, first two is closer to the center of the sweater. So that means I'm going to knit the first two together. Then knit the third one. Next three, knit the first one, then knit the next two together. Then I'm going to work to the beginning of the round. Slip the marker. The next round is a plain round. So just knit every stitch. So I finished that plain round. Now you can transfer your stitches onto a scrap yarn and try your sweater on to see if the neck is small enough. If you want it to be smaller, you can keep decreasing. So do a decrease round next, then a plain round, then a decrease round, then a plain round. And when you do a decrease round, just knit two stitches together at these four corners here 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 but once you get it to the side you like you're going to do one by one ribbing around the collar again and then complete it with a tubular bind off just like we did for the bottom ribbing 